Hello and welcome to the PTA Global webinar series. Uh, special, special webinar today. Uh, today we have the uh, owner of PTA Global, PT on the Net and DotFit, Mr. Neil Spruce. Uh, it's going to be a really good interview. It's going to be a lot of great information. A couple of topics, most are revolving around nutrition. Uh, before we we get going and 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 learn more about Neil, I want all the is listeners to know just a few things. Okay, number one, you're all muted right so we don't have any background noises however there's a box in your control panel that says questions find that box and start typing your questions any questions any comments that's how we're going to communicate and i'll be keeping my eyes on that box okay the entire webinar uh we're going to run about 20 25 minutes or so and then q a and your questions are important that's what really this is about is we does no good if we're talking about what's important to us. We need to talk about what's important to you. So please put those questions in there and I'll give you a little reminder about halfway through. There's a downloads panel. It's called handouts in your control panel. Some special offers, more information about DotBit, more information about PTA Global. Uh, so do download uh, those, those documents. And when you do that, it'll open a separate window. Don't be afraid, it's not booting you out. Uh, it'll, it'll allow you to come right back into the webinar. Uh, one more thing, if you if you uh, are on a phone, just swipe and you can toggle uh, if you need to. Maybe you only see the control panel and you can swipe to toggle to be able to see the screen. And the last thing, there's no exam. That's the good news. There's no exam for this webinar. Uh, so so uh, no worries, no stress. Uh, you can take notes, but you won't have to take a test. So with that, it is my honor to introduce uh, Mr. Neil Spruce. And, and Neil, if, if, if you could just, you know, share with our listeners, uh, you have just a fascinating history, uh, you know, the evolution of your career and, 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 and where you started and where you are right now. Yeah, well, I mean, started uh, as an athlete, uh, you know, football led to bodybuilding and bodybuilding led me to, you know, creating a nutrition platform that everybody could experience the same changes in the human body that a bodybuilder could in a very rapid way. I mean, the, the, the tough part is exercise can't change your body fast enough for people to get hooked on it. But I can change it 10 times faster with nutrition. So I built that first nutrition platform ever in the history of the gym business, and that was called Nutrition Analysis with Golds. I happen to be an athlete for Golds. They, they, there was only the one gym in Venice when I started, of course. And of course, all bodybuilders have to move there and go there to die. So I lived across the street you know, right across the street from the gym. And I was fortunate enough where they hired me to run their nutrition program all over the world. And so I created that first nutrition program. And then we launched we launched it in 535 Goals gyms before I retired as an athlete. And we built, you know, obviously the biggest chain in the world. was the, big, the biggest chain, certainly at the time, and certainly the most well-known brand, and probably still is the well-known brand today anyway. Gyms have changed and everything else. But that really was the beginning of it. So I was fortunate to be part of the grade eight uh, that, found, that was part of that. But in the meantime, or during that time, as we built all these goals, gyms and the personal training model included nutrition. We were doing more personal training because of the nutrition component than we were in memberships. And that caught the eye of Mark Masteroff, my partner today. And for those of you who don't know Mark Masteroff, he's certainly the most iconic figure in our industry. No matter where, what, where you go, what country you go to, no matter every Mark Masteroff is the guy when it comes to the gym business uh, all the way around. The founder of 24 Hour Fitness, okay, and back in the day, and that's what happened. He saw what we were doing in Gold's gyms, and so he had formed Family Fitness and 24 Hour Nautilus, merged them together, and they went up, went through an acquisition phase and looked around at all the top gyms in the world, literally in the world, looked at them all here and in the U.S. who were doing again more personal training than memberships, which was unheard of, and so he ended up buying like 160 Gold's gyms in one day. <laughs> so we ended up. We ended up partners uh, within 24 Hour Fitness. I merged, we merged my company, Apex Fitness, along with uh, 24 Hour Fitness. And that was the beginning of a relationship that's never ended. We're still partners today in all our businesses. Uh, we sold 24 Hour Fitness, as most people know, back in 2005. And to tell you the contribution to the whole thing, we sold it for $1.7 billion and almost 700 million was because of nutrition, the Apex program. That tells you the importance of it from a financial standpoint, for sure. But anyway, the important, but that doesn't, you wouldn't have that if it didn't make a difference. So it was really, for me, it was always about nutrition. That was my stick. That was the thing that made, turned me on. And that's the business that I kept building. I bought NESM, as uh, probably most, most of you know. Uh, I bought NESM back in the 90s because trainers didn't have any credibility, that they needed credibility. 
Uh, the only credibility we had back in the day was you were the biggest guy in the room. So, so you got the most clients. <laughs> That didn't work for me. If I was going to save the world of fitness, which is a commitment that I made because it saved my life, um, I was going to have to make sure the trainers were recognized as the first line of healthcare. So that was the idea of building NSM, bought a couple of more companies, merged them together, met Mike Clark, you know, who's probably you know, the, the smartest guy when it came to human movement, merged those companies together, and we built NSM, as you know, and it still today is the largest uh, there is. But that leads me to where we are today. So when Mark's and my no compete uh, ended with NASM and of course with 24 Hour Fitness, which was Apex, we formed Dot Fit, and then we purchased, and then further on we put, which is just an evolution of everything we've done before, except you know, obviously evolving and to become better. And then uh, PTA Global purchased PTA Global for that same reason. So Mark and I are partners, uh, also you know in these in, in the businesses that we are continue because we haven't quite saved the world yet. So, you know, between our new clubs, UFC, Crunches, and all the other big chains that we now have uh, operate or own, then, you know, those are the ones now that will be, you know, the, the leaders throughout the, throughout the globe. So that's the reason. And PTA Global was just that diamond in the rough. You know, like NASM was in the old days, there was just so much great information, just kind of, I, I think it just ran out of distribution power, you know, back in the day. So when I noticed, when I saw it, I go, wow, this is really cool. Not just not just a lot of NASM guys, but a whole bunch of other smart people put that all together. So a very and, and the behavioral side of it was probably the bigger thing that attracted Mark and I to it. So we just took it and we, you know, obviously working to clean it up and to distribute it, especially in our gym, so we can control the pricing, you know, to make it easier for people to get involved with personal training. Because in my opinion, personal training is going to explode now with all this new stuff going on. Outstanding. Out, it, out, and it again, I know you know this, but it's truly an honor to be able to work for you and to learn from you. And for the listeners out there, there's clearly a, a very substantial track record uh, of success. And so uh, that that's uh, that's good news for all of us here at PTA Global, PT on the Net, and at DotBit. So, you know, when we titled the webinar and we talked about, you know, what you need to know about nutrition and supplementation during COVID and beyond, and, and that's obviously still an issue. It's, it's, it's not gonna go anytime soon. One of the things that, that Neil actually uh, corrected me on that, that, that I found really fascinating is uh, I had been using some terminology of boosting your immune system. And um, what Neil explained to me is you're not boosting it. And, and so what I would like is Neil, if you could explain, because I know that's a pretty well used word, maybe talk just a little bit more about why you're not actually boosting it. Well, well you don't want to boost it. You, you, you actually could by taking in the wrong stuff. Uh, you want to support it. So there is an innate and an adaptive immune response that the human body has to everything. And of course it's all vitamin and mineral dependent. So you've got a certain amount of vitamin and minerals that you need to be able to uh, your up your immune system, be able to work the way it was designed to work from day one. And if you don't get enough, it just down regulates and it's just not strong enough. You know, so you know, and everybody, everybody knows that part of it there. But boosting it is exactly what's actually ha what's happening. Your, your immune system over responds to different infections or, or virus. It'll over respond and the inflammation is too much and it eats good tissue. And, it, and, and so all the bad, that's where an allergy is. An allergy is an over immune response. So last thing you want, that's a boosted immune system, but that's only because it's boosting itself inside because it's, it's misreacting to an, to an antigen. So you don't want to boost, you want to support it, okay? And, and give it all the things that it needs to function at its right level. You know, you know again, boosting it would just cause more inflammation. And that's why, that's why so in science, we don't use that word. Uh, it's supporting the immune system all the way around. Excellent. Perfect. And thanks. Thanks for addressing that. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there that had that misconception as well. And while I'm speaking here, I just want to uh, uh, a shout out to the audience. If anybody's having any problems with video or sound, please shoot me a message in the question panel because I see somebody wrote no sound. I, I can hear Neil just fine. So I want to make sure that everything's working properly. So shoot it, shoot us a message in the question panel and just let us know. Now, kind of piggybacking onto that, Neil. Uh, if, if you were to uh, give advice, and I know you do this and you do this very often, what are the must do's and the must haves when it comes to nutrition and supplementation? Yeah, so let's just talk about it from that standpoint, because obviously the first 
line of defense against things like the, the virus that's affecting other COVID-19 that's affecting all of us right now is to stop the spread. Stopping the spread by washing your hands, social, you know, physical distancing, not social because we're physically distanced, but we're not socially distanced, okay? So physical distancing and washing your hands and doing the best you can to, you know, to control the spread. So that's number one. So, that, but when it comes to nutrition, all which I get interviewed a couple times a day, or whatever, what do we need to do from a nutritional standpoint? Well, I tell you right now, go back to my original lectures when I first started lecturing around the world when I was 24, same advice. There is no difference. What's not negotiable for every human being on the planet is a complete multivitamin mineral. I say complete. When you buy in the mass market, those are incomplete. Right, so a practitioner products. You have to have, you have to have the own, you have to have the known underconsumed vitamin minerals. You know, no one gets what we call the recommended dietary allowances of all vitamins. Yet every part of our body is vitamin mineral dependent. Our cardiovascular system, our muscles. You're not. You don't even start life without 30 of them in your system, right? And they come in through the mom. They get in there, and the fetus grows. And it doesn't do a great job if it doesn't get the right amounts, okay? Which is why we have prenatals for every conceiving mother that wiped out 30% of all major birth defects overnight when we started making sure that everyone took a prenatal multivitamin mineral. But you don't stop taking it when you get out of the womb. You only eat worse. No one gets all the vitamins and minerals that they need to reach the RDA levels. No one has. 10,000 studies have proven that. Food alone isn't going to get it done. You don't just accidentally get what you need. You know, so that's number one. I mean, it's just, that, that's just a logical, it's not a trick equation. No one gets it, but yet our scientists lay out these levels for us to get. So complement your food intake by a complete multivitamin mineral. Then you're setting yourself up. You have all the things your body upregulates to them rather than downregulating to what it gets from food alone. So that's number one. Number two, if you're not eating fish daily, which unfortunately 95, not daily, but uh, weekly, you're getting two to four servings a week then you don't need to take an omega-3 supplement. You should be getting enough if, as long as it's good fatty fish. I don't need one, but yet 95% of the United States does in Western nations, they need one. That also supports the immune system to a significant amount, as much as the vitamin minerals. It's almost like another vitamin and mineral that we, our bodies have to have. Our cardiovascular system needs it, and our brain development needs it, and our immune system. So, but that was still part of the same recommendation back in the old days. All right, and then finally, everybody should be getting one gram per pound of lean body mass of protein daily. And that's it, that, th those are the things there, that would help. See, we're on the preventative side, so we look at everything as prevention, prevention as opposed to the cure approach, right? So it's prevention first. With all that said, because don't forget, your multivitamin mineral's got that super high vitamin D, super high vitamin C when you're taking the right one. So you don't need a separate supplement for those things. That's the whole idea. And that's what I hate about what's happening today, Dan, is that on the news, oh, take a vitamin D supplement. Even Fauci is saying, take a vitamin D supplement. That's not gonna help you at this point. It's gonna take months and months and months for you to get your levels up there. But if you've been doing it your whole life, you're there. It's all about prevention versus the cure, okay? So you know that, that's what we have to do. So that's just a simple recommendation that hasn't changed. Now, here's, what ha here's where you add to it with all the new science today. So if it fits your budget, you add a probiotic because don't forget your immune system is attached to your GI system, your gastrointestinal tract. 70% of the immune cells are align the gastrointestinal tract. People don't realize that. It is what we call the gut brain, gut heart access. Everything, it starts with your gut. If your gut's healthy, you have a good chance of everything else working properly. So a good probiotic daily during this time of high health risk, add that to it. And then glutamine which is we give, as you know, uh, you, you live on it as you're preparing for those ridiculous events that you do, okay? You have glutamine, glutamine is the, uh, you know, is the most ubiquitous amino acid in the human body. Anytime during stress, and of course, there, we actually give it intravenous to people in surgeries uh, because anytime during stress, glutamine levels are depressed and they're part of everything. Every part of the body needs that glutamine and especially your GI tract. You know, your enterocytes, which replace themselves every three days, use glutamine as an energy component to replace themselves. So that eats up a ton of it right there. You keep those enterocytes happy and good things happen. They can seep the wrong things out of your body and bring let the right things in. So glutamine we add during high stress times, chronic uh, calorie restriction and high intense workouts or what we call overreaching. 
like someone like you when you're training for those triple marathons, whatever the hell they call those things that you do. Those, you know, you're living on it. You're just mainlining glutamine the whole time. So that's what you add during these times of high health risk. Okay, I just lost your sound. I just lost your sound. That's because I was muted. Oh, uh, I okay, wanted to make okay. sure I didn't have any background noise. Thank oh, you. Uh, yeah, I was, what I was saying is I definitely, uh, definitely am increasing my, my glutamine during certain times of the year. So thank you for that. And, you know, uh, again, By folks, the way, what, what, what that mean, what, what, the reason we do that for the athletes under stress, we call that exercise, exercise induced immune suppression. That's what it is for athletes like you that overtrain football players going to two to two a days, right? It's exercise induced immune suppression because the body's all it's trying to do is recover and the immune system suffers. Athletes get sick more than most people. Isn't that funny? Exercisers don't, not recreational. They actually helps their immune system that little, but overreaching athletes and these competitive athletes get sick more than the average person. Absolutely true. And injured and injured. Yes, absolutely true. Right. Now, uh, for the listeners, again, type your questions in. And I see one right now. And I see a couple that because of where we are, I think I'm going to go ahead and bring them up, Neil. Yeah. Um, Christy, Christy uh, asks, how do we know if a multivitamin is complete or not? Yeah. That's a great question. Well, it's got to have to have anywhere from 15 to 19. You don't have to worry about it if you're using a practitioner product. A practitioner product is all we deliver. We don't sell in the mass market. We don't sell in consumer channels. We sell through practitioners, okay? And that's so they recognize it as not just third-party tested to make sure everything's in it, but it's also the highest level you can get for a complete multivitamin mineral because you're not going to find one in the mass market. Don't even bother. Just stick with a practitioner product like the dot fit. And so yeah, it's yeah. And, and and I believe that's uh, uh, definitely a common. I'm guilty, you know, trying to find the best bargain, the best deal. Uh, did that for many many years, actually, until I met you. Uh, yeah. That's exactly how I how I did things. So great advice, thank you. Um, hey, hey, you know what? Guess what? We have a question from Rodney. Rodney huh. Horn. And uh, uh, for those that don't know, Rod is one of the co-founders of PTA Global. Uh, the gentleman that he used to work for Neil, he hired me. Thank. Thank you, Rod. Uh, and he just had surgery where he uh, donated his kidney to his brother. And what his question is, is glutamine good for post-surgery? Yeah, and, and, and very often they'll give it to people post-surgery. If you go, you look up most of the studies on glutamine, that's where they take place, you know, in hospitals. They actually intravenous uh, feeding of that to help you know, with the recovery process. So the answer is yes. All right, great. Uh, I'll, send now, you a ton of, I'll send you a ton of it, Rod. He'll he'll take care of your ride. I'm I'm really good to see you on there. Uh, now he says he's ordering now. Uh, now on that note, so we're, we talked about what are the must-haves, what are the things that we add in addition, uh, and a great question as is you know how do we know if it's complete? That leads me to just one final thing in that nutrition piece, and that is what are the biggest mistakes that you see uh, those who are taking supplements that they make in choosing or which ones or how much, what brands, what are the biggest mistakes you see, Neil? Well, you just said it earlier, you're shopping on price. Yeah. This is something you're gonna put in your body in concentrated amounts. You're shopping on price? You really better rethink that. You know, and, and, and of course, for instance, as you know, um, Dan, both my boys are professional athletes. One actually made it to the NFL. The other was a professional fighter. They're drug tested athletes. First thing you're taught, you walk into the locker room and your, your strength conditioning coaches, your coaches say never, ever buy a supplement in a GNC, bodybuilding.com or any of these things. You buy only an NSF certified product in, 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 in that practitioner realm, which is why we're the largest distributor in all the world for uh, pro sports and college sports. Our, our nutrition programs and products because obviously a practitioner product that is NSF certified for sports. So that eliminates all the crap what happens in the mass market. That's why you hear scientists say as well, you shouldn't supplement because they're they all supplement. <laughs> but if they're using a practitioner product, but they but I agree with them. You can't you can't the commercial practices are terrible. 50% of everything you buy in the store or online, that includes Walmart, Costco, whatever, 50% is mismarked, which means you're not getting what you're what you think you're getting. 
And, and that, though that, that's all over the place. And the manufacturing processes are all flawed unless you are falling under practitioner rules, which you're governed by a whole different group. Everything's third party. So that's the only way to go. And that's the way you have to do it if you really want to get things to actually make that difference for you. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Neil. Yep. Now, uh, it, we've, 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 we've referred back to the dot fit uh, line to your company, to the difference. And something I wanted to throw out there to our listeners that that is so unique uh, because about DotFit because we're, we're saying, well, you can't get it at GNC, you can't get it at bodybuilding.com. So can you explain to the listeners, uh, number one, how they would be able to acquire DotFit uh, supplements and certification, uh, but more importantly, how they have the ability to actually make a business out of it? And, yeah. and, yeah, we actually have for, for you know, in our facilities, and we have about, I don't know, 1,500 around the world uh, globally that use the dot fit platform for the trainers in the facility. So they just get go through our certification and they run, they incorporate nutrition into their personal training. Okay, so that's how that works. Outside that, which is the, obviously the vast majority of trainers, we have another 30,000 practitioners that are part of the dot fit elite. So that's what you want in the Outfit Elite. You actually get a whole platform so you can run your own business from it. Use nutrition, add it to your training. It's also got a training program in it, but you can do that. There's all types of other bells and whistles. And we actually we actually uh, pay people, uh, you know, they, they just for like $8.99 a month, they get the whole platform, right? And they can use it for free with their clients, right? All the nutrition programming and everything else. And every time their client gets involved in a supplement package like the one we just talked about, that simple one there, we pay them 30% of that revenue. So we're and just the supplement piece alone, we pay trainers up to two, three thousand dollars a month just for that piece. And that doesn't include how much they actually can improve or increase the cost of their personal training because it includes nutrition. And they add that to each session for the individual clients and so forth. So there's a lot of stuff they can do. And that's just the dot fit elite. So you just go to the dot fit.com backslash elite. And they can they can see all that stuff there. Excellent, thank you. And and for the listeners, one of the downloads has the information on that. Uh, the executive vice president uh, for Dot Fit is Robert Retman, and he uh, his contact information is going to be in a follow up email. Okay, it's also in the download if you have any questions or interest. And uh, you know that something that I just want to throw out there that that I noticed that that we all noticed here uh, as a as a group of brands that work together. You know, we talk about diversification or having diversity in revenue streams, right? More than one way to provide income to take care of your your home, your your family, maybe. And if you put all your eggs in one basket and something goes wrong, um, you're out of luck. And we saw that with personal training. If somebody had uh, all their eggs in their basket and their gym closed, um, you know, it was a tough time. The trainers that had the 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 dot fit and they were part of dot fit elite we're doing very well and, and maintaining a revenue stream because more than ever, people are realizing the importance of taking care of yourself and supporting your immune system. So something to think about um, is having some diversity in your revenue stream. Yeah, that's a very good point, Dan. And, you know, the other thing is, and that's why I'm so excited about, you know, PTA Global, um, you know, it really, you know, my goal is to get everyone that's involved with PTA Global always to understand, hey, we aren't exercise instructors. That's, you want to be an exercise instructor, you can go anywhere and learn that. We are holistic practitioners that can give you what you need and your family needs to help on the preventative side to, or reduce the risk of the bad things that happen. So you don't need to go to the doctor for all these things, right? The best pharmacy in the world is the human body. The human body can beat things that we can't even figure out how to beat with drugs. You know, so that if you treat it properly and do it right, which obviously means you, you've got to put the right nutrition into it, top it off, great things happen. Excellent. Perfect. Well, thank you, Neil. And, and now I'm going to I'm going to take some time uh, to to pull up some questions here. Good. Let's see. Um, well, here's an interesting one. Uh, Debbie asked, what do you think about elderberry supplements to support the immune system? Yeah, I mean, there's some evidence there. It's not an evidence-based supplement. We can't deal with it because of that. You know, we are, again, a practitioner product means that we're evidence-based, which means that it has to have the strongest support from the contingency of scientists in our discipline. 
Um, and uh, elementary, it, it, it's got some good stuff there, and I think it's okay. There's no reason. You're certainly not going to hurt yourself adding that. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And and again, uh, thank you, Debbie, for the question. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Ling asks, what food sources are high in glutamate? Um, well, all, you know, all proteins have a significant amount in it, okay? But you can also make glutamine. You can also make it. It's, 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 what, it's what we call a, a conditionally essential. In other words, it can be made in the body, but during times of stress, we can't make enough of it. So we need to supply it, okay? So basically, most of your protein sources are, are very high in, are, are high in glutamine, but it's still not enough because most people can't eat that much without getting overweight. <laughs> you know, so then you offset any, any benefit of it. Perfect, perfect. Um, Amreen asks, uh, is it really recommended to take pre or post-workout supplements? Yeah, the only thing we recommend, you know, for your average recreational athlete or, you know, recreational exerciser is take, you, you need one gram per pound of lean body mass of protein daily. And we love it. We like, we divide it up four to five times throughout the day. So you might as well take one serving before a workout, one after, because there is this window of opportunity when exercise induced muscle, uh, you know, muscle damage, okay? When it happens and it converges with amino acids coming in right around the same time, wow, good things happen. You know, that you repair much quicker. And that window only lasts about 60 minutes after workout and food takes four hours to break down. So you're not gonna have it then. So a shake right after, no matter what, immediately after, just drink it slowly. Take a shake with about, you know, what, 30 grams of protein, 25 grams of protein, take that shake one 30 minutes before to, to slow down the breakdown of muscle, right you know because you, you don't want to break down too much otherwise all you're doing is rebuilding it rather than really recovering all the way so you, uh, if you take a one one shot of protein there and you take one after well there's 50 grams of your protein so you probably only need less than 100 after that divided up so it's easy so no matter what you would want to do that and that's what we do that we feel that's very important to longevity it's not going to make you like wow, God, I feel great. I just had a protein shake before I worked out or right after, oh man, I feel bigger or stronger. That's not the way it works. It works over time. If you recover great in that 60 minute window, really good things happen. You recover, you're ready to work out again and again. And in a year's time, you're that much better than you would have been without doing that. And now you can keep doing this all the way to end of days. That's the goal. Oh, I love it. And and one of the things I've I've learned from you, uh, Neil, is is taking care of yourself with the proper nutrients from womb to tomb, right? That's so right. so one when, when mama has baby, that's womb, and then throughout the entire life. So I love that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here's an interesting one. So uh, Gabriel asks, what are your thoughts on testosterone boosters for older men? And have you considered offering them? Yeah, no, the answer is no. On the latter part, no, because we would uh, we, we violate our practitioner product status. Um, the, here's what here's my opinion on that. We're if if you actually had a testosterone booster that actually worked that fell under the category of dietary supplements without being illegally spiked, which the ones that you buy out there are illegally spiked, okay, and they've been busted. Bodybuilding.com even got busted four years ago, just spiking stuff with steroids and stuff. So those are Let's just, let's get rid of those. But you look at, you know, tribulus, terrestrial, or some of these ones that we, that can boost testosterone a little bit, right? We haven't really seen what happens with that. We don't know. The problem with this, when you offset the decline in natural hormones, which is what has to happen as you age, no one dies at age 98 looking like Mr. Universe or like <laughs> I did back when I competed, right? That's not going to happen. At some point, you've got to go this way. The problem is if you cheat it by raising your testosterone levels back to the younger age, what if you've got a cancer festering? You don't know about it. What do you have a disease? Well, that's just going to accelerate it. So the answer in, from me will always be no. And, I, and now, again, you can have your doctor, if you, unless you have a doctor monitor you if, you, if you're legitimately well below to where you're, you've lost your sex drive, and at a young age, let's say you're 45 or 50 or something, you've lost your sex drive, you don't recover, you don't sleep well and all that, then they measure your testosterone and you're below maybe 100 nanograms or something. Yeah, okay, you are the legitimate candidate for it. 
and then your doctor administers it and they check to see if it aromatizes. As long as it doesn't aromatize and get to the other hormones and affect your estrogen and all that, which it generally does at some point, then you're probably gonna be okay. But at some point you gotta stop it. You can't just, no one dies looking beautiful of old age, you know, by the time they're a hunter. You've got to start aging. You don't want it to do it really quick. So when you go off it, when you have to go off it because of the extra liver work or kidney work that your body had to go through to be able to metabolize that, you could age very, very quickly. So the answer to that is no. If you fall within the proper ranges, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. That's all. That's, and that is personal opinion. I, I will give you that, but that's based on, you know, some scientific data. Excellent. Good. And that's definitely a common question. Because really, I want to use it again. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> oh, here's a here's a great question from Amreen, Neil. Um, he says, lots of people say protein shakes are not good for the body or the kidneys. Is this a myth or a truth? Yeah, that would be a very old myth. That's pretty much gone <laughs> away a long time. I, I, listen, I, that was prevalent back in the 70s and, 80s, and even... That was dying around around the 80s because we started doing studies. We found that proteins actually, because we used to think, okay, we've got stress the kidney because of the nitrogen, right? Stress the kidney. If you're not using it to deposit it into lean muscle, and you can only put so much in lean muscle every day, right? You're using it for energy. And then the kidney's got to filter it a little bit more and all this. So we thought it would actually tax the kidney. We've studied people for four, taking four times the RDA, four times the RDA, so over a gram per pound, right? And uh, for years and years and years and zero negative effects. And in fact, even stronger bones, because we all thought it would affect bone as well, because you know protein would be acidic to the blood and then calcium is released to the bone to buffer that acidity, acidity to bring the pH back to normal. So that was the theory, all been debunked. So do not worry about it. The only time too much protein is gonna be bad for you is when it's taking the place of other nutrition foods. You don't just live on protein. Right. If you're taking your vegetables and fruits away, then that's a bad thing. Right. So that's the only time you're going to have a problem. But you, you, you'll get sick of the protein long before you can eat too much of it. Excellent. Great. Great. Thank you. And thank you, Amreen, for the question. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel, you're welcome. He says, appreciate the information. He's, he's thanking you, Neil. Um, I, here's an interesting question uh, from Leo. Uh, what foods increase testosterone? Well, I mean, you're, 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 you're pretty much your little your protein foods and protein shakes, by the way, can can raise it as well. The other thing is, is anytime you raise your insulin a little bit, so you, there there is a there is a relationship between carbohydrate intake. Like all of our young athletes, all of them use a completely different formula than than old retired athletes like me. Like both my boys, you know, that are professional athletes, they use two to one carbohydrate to protein ratio shakes before and after. OK, because that raises the insulin that helps with testosterone. It does all that. If you cut your carbohydrates down too low, it also lowers your testosterone a little bit. So you definitely need some carbs in there as well. Otherwise, you're, you're your protein shakes and so forth. Excellent. Excellent. Now, let's see. Uh, another good question I saw here. This, again, very common. And we, we, we hear a lot of uh, differing viewpoints. Jose asks, what are the biggest differences or benefits of a plant-based diet versus a meat-based diet or non okay, so let's, diet? Let's, let, what I would like to do is define that. Okay, I'm a pure omnivore, all right, which means I eat the spectrum. And all humans were designed to be that. That's how we evolved. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. If we couldn't eat all these different foods and our stomachs couldn't handle it and our bodies couldn't handle it, we would have died off a long, long time ago. We'll, be, we'll still be the shortest living species in the history of the planet. I can promise you that. But at least we found a way to get foods and eat this, this, and this, whatever is available. So we, we evolved as omnivores. That's natural. That means, you know, fish, chicken, meat, you know, whatever you want to classify as meat, red meats and so forth. And then, of course, you know, fruits and vegetables. Now, I, you, but I am a true omnivore and I get a gram per pound of protein. And most of it comes from very lean meats and protein shakes. All right, which is dairy, all right? Now, which is whey protein. Now, but my my menu is really a diet based. I mean, it's just plant based. It is. I, I have more fruits and vegetables than I have in, in, in meats. And that includes fish because I eat a lot of fish because that's a meat. All right, so anyway, that, that, to define that first. So a meat-based diet is definitely not gonna be good for someone that doesn't 
you know, that, that's not eating anything else. I mean, you're eating very few fruits and vegetables. A plant-based, a plant or a vegan diet, which is all plants, right? Which means you are eating nothing that ever had a face on it or came from something that had a face on it. That is, that, that, now that is a, a more ecological environmental play. That helps the environment. I applaud people that can do that. It's not a natural thing. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of vitamin and mineral deficiencies because of it, but you just supplement properly and you'll be fine. I do a whole lecture on how do you build muscle as a vegan athlete. I do a whole lecture on that and you can do it. You can do it just fine. It's a little more complicated, a little more work designing your diets and how they comp proteins complement. But without a doubt, I mean, ve veganism or vegetarianism, which would include like a pescatarian, which means you can have fish, which is more like a, a Mediterranean style diet. They're definitely better for the environment and better for you from a health standpoint, okay, than an all meat diet. If you're talking like a Midwestern diet where it's just meat and potatoes, that is, you're, you're missing too many of the great things that your body needs. So that's, so make sure you, you when you say meat based, um, you know, you can, I'm an omnivore and I get a plenty of meat, you know, between fish, chicken and uh, red, or lean red meat, but I, I have a plant-based diet. Basically my plate has more plants on it. Just like my lunch today had, you know, had spinach salad along with a fruit salad and I had, Oh, uh, about eight ounces of uh, eight ounces of leftover flank steak from last night. That's still a plant. You would still call that a plant base because it's majority plant. And it worked. Uh, Neil's 110 years old. Look at him. I mean, that's he's just I, doing a fantastic right. doing a fantastic job. Uh, you know, walking the talk here. Uh, the last I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up with one last question um, here that ties right into that one, and it and that says that uh, Tony asks. Are plant-based protein supplements as good as animal sources? Well, they don't start out that way. That's impossible. As we know, whey is far superior, which is the dairy protein. It is the, it is the whey portion of the whole milk. You got the casein, you got whey. There's nothing close to whey. It has the highest digestibility factor and absorption factor and integration factor into the human body because the amino acid profile, the essential amino acids are the only things that are important, are the highest per gram of protein of any protein on the earth. So no one can argue that at all. Now, you can make a plant protein like that. You can actually do that. So what we have, what we call best plant protein, we took a pea protein, mixed it with different seeds, chia seeds and everything else. So the amino acid content now is equal to that of whey protein. So all you're doing is fortifying a plant protein to make the amino acid content per gram equal to a whey and you're fine. So it really is all about complementing it all the way around. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, and I'm going to throw one more in one more, because uh, these are things that I know that that DOFIT takes special care in addressing. And it's a very common question. And Tony asks, what if you're lactose intolerant? OK, so you should know this now. I mean, there are some proteins out there, some dairy proteins that are that uh, could still contain lactose. So and but they have to post that on the label. All of our dairy proteins contain no lactose. It's all stripped. So you don't have to ever worry about that. But there are people that have, are, have dairy protein allergies, and that's completely different. A very small subpopulation, but that's different. So you, most of your proteins are good proteins and not some of the cheap ones. The ones you buy in the stores uh, are definitely cheap proteins. They're going to still have lactose if it's from dairy. Um, but uh, otherwise, a whey isolate, uh, you can trust that. A whey isolate is uh, something that has everything stripped from the whey, except for the amino acids. So that's one thing you can do if you want that amino acid profile. Otherwise, there's other proteins like the plant protein. Uh, you know, again, but like I say, none of our proteins, any of our whey, and all of ours contain whey, dairy proteins, all, most of them do. Uh, they have no lactose in them. Excellent, excellent. Well, that was a great batch of questions. Um, we're running a little short here on being, uh, being able to answer all of them. And that's why you're going to uh, have a follow-up email here with contact information to be able to reach out because one of the, the the really cool things that I admire about Neil is is he answers questions directly. Um, he he's accessible. He's going to uh, share that information. He's not hiding away and asking for other people to do all that. Neil runs the the, the business. He's right down in in front with the troops, leading the troops. So do well, follow up. It's my favorite thing to do when I wake up in the morning and I got 60 questions, you know, and I think, and I just go, I just go, I just love to kind of just, you know, just go through them and answer them and all that. So we have to do this again sometime. 
live. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, and it's, again, the follow-up email is going to have contact information to be able to reach out and connect with Rob, who can, uh, you know, point you in the right direction. You can go to the .fit.com web website, which is going to have an ask, ask the experts uh, area. So you'll be able to to get all your questions answered. And if you think of more later on, or you watch this as a recording, please do reach out for that resource. So that being said, Neil, do you have any parting thoughts as we as we wrap things up here? No, you know, just hopefully all the practitioners on here, all you PTA Global family and everything else, first of all, I just want to thank you for being involved in our business. But, you know, just, you know, think, think big. Think that, you know, my goal is to be, for all of us to be looked at the first, as the first line of healthcare. The model that we're in today is called disease care. It is after the fact. You, you, you get you, you, something bad happens, you go to the doc. You know, I mean, just this virus is a classic example. What if we all did the things I just I told everybody to do back when I was 24 and we did What if we all did that? That's the vaccine. I got news for you. That's the vaccine. So, you know, the, the whole idea of, of doing a holistic approach rather than just being an exercise instructor or just a diet guy or whatever, putting it all together, we become that first line of healthcare because we take care of people's health while they have it. That would be healthcare in my eyes. Excellent. Wise words from a wise man. Thank you, Neil, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to do these things. Listeners, thank you for taking time out of your day to tune in and uh, to be able to be a part, a bigger part of this community. Uh, we appreciate you. We couldn't do it without you. And until next time, Dan Duran here uh, signing off. Thanks, thank everyone. You, Thanks, Dan.